the childhood doesn't have innocence and we can even do away with maybe age of consent laws or we can da da da. So there's that, that whole sick side of it. But from the Marxist perspective, having studied the history of Marxism to the 20th century, I'm telling you, this guy, George Lukács in Hungary laid this plan out because if you get these kids, like you break down their innocence sexually, especially, uh, what you can do is then you're gonna, they're going to go home and they're going to tell their parents that they're some like lith romantic you know, demisexual, you know, tree, tree self gender, some, you know, pronouns tree, tree self or something. Some, and their parents are going to be like, what, you know? And they're going to be like, mom, you just don't understand, you know? So that you separate the, the younger generation from the older generations. You get them to break away and think that they're old fogies, that they're repressive. You don't want me to be my true self, et cetera. The goal is actually to destabilize the kid's identity so that they're groomable. That's identity without an essence in queer theory. And then they're groomable. Then you groom them into this stuff. And then they look at their parents' culture. They look at their parents themselves. They look at their parents' generation. They look at the parents' religion. And they say, that doesn't represent me. We need something completely different. So it's to set, it's to, just like in Mao's cultural revolution, and I mean that much more literally than, than you might suspect, it's to cut the tie between the continuity of culture up to that point, including the family, and to start a whole new culture afterwards. I mean, Pol Pot called it year zero. I guess Klaus Schwab calls it the Great Reset. Um, but the goal is to separate the new generation from the traditions and views of the old generation. For Mao, it was to destroy the so-called four olds, old culture, old habits, old customs, and old ways of thinking, Sujio in, in Mandarin. And... Um, these kids would get like hopped up on this crap, and became the Red Guard and like would go into temples and like rip down all the statuary and tear things down and destroy all the, all the old – all the old kung fu masters mm. got their asses beat by mobs to get rid of like old Chinese culture because it's embarrassing or whatever. You know, there's all – Chinese medicine of course and you can say, well, that stuff was bullshit. It probably needed – it doesn't matter. It was like destroy the old culture and they would go home and they eventually got to where they're beating their parents. They're beating their teachers that were considered revolutionaries or sorry, uh, reactionaries, instead of being in favor of the Chinese Cultural Revolution. And Mao had a whole program he used in schools. And I see something so similar to that in our schools now that I'm freaking out. And what he did was he separated. Listen to this. You'll see it immediately. He created 10 classes of people. Five of them uh, were black, were labeled black classes. They're bad. And five of them, because of communism, are red and they're good. And the, the, the I can't remember them all off the top of my head, but like the black classes were like landlord or child of landlord right oh. um uh what else would you have that were yeah landlords um counter-revolutionaries bad influences was one of the the so like that's us because we're spreading mm. you know more bad influences and so he had these categories uh, people who had lots of money basically people who are capitalists especially landlords. And so those people are bad. And if you're like the son of one of those people or connected to one of those people, they're going to tell you at school, you're like the worst kind of person. Your dad's a landlord. Your family does this. You guys are landholders or rich farmer was one of them. Rich farmer. Hmm. Um, it was one of them. And then they give you these red identities. Well, you can be a revolutionary. You know, you can uh, – peasant classes, day laborers, that's one or two of the red classes because it's communism. But then, you know, you can become a revolutionary. You can join the Red Guard. You can take up these, you know, you can be a good communist. And now we'll call you, we'll give you like a, you know, red jacket or whatever, a red feather, I don't know, something. And you're like one of the cool kids, whereas we're going to constantly tell you how bad you are over here. Now, take out those classes like, um, you know, landowner or whatever and switch it out. White, straight, male, thin, fit, attractive, conventionally attractive, whatever, Right. There's your black classes. So you start telling all these kids, for example, it's critical race theory stuff, or like I have this here, like race Marxism. You start showing them, you, you start telling them that they are part of the racist superstructure of society, basically, that they're part of the systemic racism problem. And so their whole identity, generationally, like your parents are white, you didn't do it, it's not your fault, but you have all this privilege, blah, blah, blah. You have these kids who are like, well, how can I have a positive identity? And what do those look like? Well... You could be black, you could, or some other racial minority. You could be queer, and all of a sudden you have a pathway, a funnel, into a positive identity. Not gay, because that's not enough. You have to actually be queer. Like it's not meant to be a stable. Like oh well, I'm a guy who likes guys. The end. No, I was born this way. No, queer theorists don't get on with it. They didn't support gay marriage. They're, the queer theorists don't like any of that stuff. They don't want to normalize anything. Well, and, what is queer then? 
queer is an identity without an essence. It's a constantly fluid identity. It can be whatever you want as long as it's politically active against anything that's considered normal or normative. So you can be queer and have a heterosexual relationship? I mean, if you wanted to yell about things the right way, but mostly you're going to have to adopt something, one of these like made up genders, sexual, sexual orientations. Yeah. They even have romantic orientations, like how who you're romantically attracted to instead of sexually attracted. They got this. They're, they're, they're obsessives. We've said that word earlier. Yeah. But you give people a pathway, and where do you see the vast majority of these young people transitioning and seeking non-binary and bisexual and whatever else? Young girls, who are the most social status concerned, and white man is probably not going to get anything anyway. And so these young white girls are all becoming some kind of weird gender thing. Why? Because they're getting constantly barraged by critical race theory that says white is bad. White is complicit in racism. You're a racist. You can become an ally. That's that's a red identity, ally, racial, racial ally. But you also have these pathways to where you get social status. And it's not enough that you're going to say, oh, I'm bi or I'm pansexual or I'm demisexual or I'm whatever. It's not enough to do that. You now have to politically be active in that regard or you're not authentically that. That's where we heard so many people, Ayanna Presley most famously, you know, she's, I put on Twitter the other day, Ayanna Presley, and I couldn't remember where she's from. So I put, you know, it's like always like D and then like the state, like DMI if it's from like Michigan or whatever, Mm -hmm. or D Michigan, I put D hell because I don't remember where she's from. Um, But Ayanna Presley came out and had this speech during the St. Floyd riots. And she was like, we don't need any more black faces who don't want to be black voices. We don't need any more brown faces who don't want to be brown voices. What does that mean? It means you have to be politically active. Nicole Hannah-Jones from the New York Times, the 1619 Project, said the same thing. There's a difference between being racially black, black and politically black. So then in your former home state of California, or not home state, I guess, but you know, resident state of California, Larry Elder runs for governor, was the LA Times run? Black face of white supremacy. Because yeah. he's not politically black. So you have to be politically active. You have to be 